Well, Karen, uh, thanks so much uh, for the introduction. And it's, it's my great pleasure here to uh, do another webinar for Artex Barn Solutions, which now uh, with the amazing thing uh, is working with, or, or they merged with VES, which both companies are, I've worked with uh, all over the world. And, and it's, uh, it's quite, a, uh, quite a merger, I think. It's, it's good for the industry and so, uh, today, we're going to talk a little bit about facility floors and hand, handling systems, uh, cow handling systems, especially for hoof trimming, but mostly facility floors. And, and what I, what I want to do here is to start out with is uh, some of the talking points that the, the claw horn lesions are related to walking surfaces. And then we're going to look a little bit about the interaction between the hoof and the walking surfaces. Concrete for years, crucial construction points. We're gonna go into that. We're gonna talk about ideal grooving patterns uh, for good claw function, resurfacing methods to reduce claw horn lesions and hoof trimming area designed to simplify lot livestock handling. So with that, when we look at lameness uh, records, and, and uh, or inter interpret lameness. We have seasonality sometimes, but as you can see here on the right hand side, oh, sorry about that. Digital dermatitis is a hygiene issue. White line disease is traction and grooving. So it, white line disease probably has the most to do with, with flooring, with, with the grooving and the traction. Sole ulcers, it's all about standing time. Uh, and then toe ulcers is wear. So again, maybe uh, we'll show some examples and over trimming is toe ulcers. And then axial fractures can be traction and stability. And, and this is something that, that's still true today, but uh, Arturo Gomez in 2015 put this together. And I wouldn't agree any, uh, I wouldn't agree more with him that it's, it's just the way it is. So white line lesions and generally, these are white line lesions, they always generally are on the back outside claws, back towards the heel. And they increase with poor, part, with poor walking, floor stability, incorrect grooving, slippery walking surfaces, overuse of backing gates so, or crowd gates, long claws and incorrect hoof trimming. And when we look at it here, here is a nice graph where it shows uh, at this particular day that, that uh, poor grooving in the freestyle sheds and then the holding pen time resulted in a white line lesion. So overuse, when the cows are hot in the summer, they don't wanna load as well into the parlor. So we're using the backing gate more, the crowd gate more, which then the cows in the back, they paddle and which results in white line lesions. And, and again, uh, maybe in, in an area like that, maybe we could, uh, that's maybe where sometimes rubber will come in, but we always have to think about is, even if there is rubber, cows are still not gonna move. And so, and then the next thing is the toe ulcers, the thin soles from the wear. And you can see in this video very clearly, uh, when, you, when you push on that, it's soft. It's yielding, okay? Now she's probably okay, but when you look at this one here, she wasn't okay anymore, okay? What's happening is uh, with, with some of the larger herds today, aggressive sand or poor uh, concrete conformation, we get too much wear. And, and the one thing we have to understand is that the horn grows at about five millimeters a month, three sixteenths inch of a month, and when the walking distance or the abrasion is more than that, we get, the, we get thin soles. Or sometimes confirmation. I had a cow this morning while I was trimming that had a little straighter leg and she had thin soles on, on, on the left rear where the leg was straight, straighter. So, but the other thing can also be in, in some of these larger facilities over trimming. So knowing what to leave on and what to take off is a huge important part when it comes to hoof trimming. And so the other thing here is, I, I wanna point out, this is a new dairy startup. And what you can see here is, this is the type of floors they, 
it, there was. And, and, and we, here we got these sharp edges from the groove, plus we got a V-groove. And we're gonna talk about that later. V-groove has round a corner, so we didn't time the cows slip a lot more across this. Plus the width of the groove, the flat is too wide. It's, it's over four, four inches, it's like four and a half inches. But the thing here is the new startup at this dairy, you can see here what we had. We had thin soles and toe ulcers, okay? So, so uh, these are the thin soles, here are the toe ulcers. And then as it went along, it kind of went away. We still ended up with some toe ulcers and sometimes because this is July, August, September, that could be maybe due to the heat. Uh, they just don't recover very quickly. And a lot of this has to do with rough, rough finishes on the bigger dairies uh, with, with uh, new concrete. And here's a good example of coarse sand and wear or concrete, okay? And we're gonna talk about why this happens. This is all probably about curing uh, on, on this or these type of floors, traffic, okay? What we have to think about the traffic that this concrete floor uh, has every day. And I'm a, I got a good example uh, in a little bit. So when we look at, this was a study here in the state of Wisconsin by Nigel Cook, 2015. So we had sand, mattress, hertz, and others. So, and what you can see here with lameness, average lameness was 13% across the board on these 13, on these 66 hertz. Production on these hertz was roughly uh, 30,000 uh, 30, pounds of milk herd average, so about 14,000 kilo of milk with uh, less than a 30% call rate. And, and there's various things that they looked at that qualified for these. And you can see here, we had actually herds with uh, one herd here with over 30% lameness, okay, on the, on the mattress end of it. And you can see as we go along here, the sand had the lowest had the lowest lameness because one of the things the sand one of the things the sand does is it provides traction. Every time we have sand, if it's not too aggressive, we're going to have less white line lesions. Now, what I want to show you here is, is it's quite an interesting video. The University of Zurich did this, and and uh, they just put a cow on a on a on basically a, a belt and and observed her. But the thing I really want you to watch is when that foot lands right here, when that foot lands, how that inside outside claw lands firmly and the other one kind of uh, kind of uh, uh, flubbers a little bit. So what's happening there is that the inside claw in the front is the one that is more traumatized because it doesn't land as good. When we come to the back, it's just the opposite. You can see how the inside claw really lands down and the other one, uh, the other one kind of moves a little bit for a little while, but also the incredible motion in the joint up above. Okay. And this is, this is in a rubber belt. Okay. And so it seems like the opposite claw is getting traumatized with someone. That's the reason you can see how it lands, lands sideways. When it lands sideways like this, that's where the white line lesion comes from. So because it's, and if the floor is slippery or, or, if, or if it's uneven, there is, it, it gets more traumatized, traumatized from the side. The other thing here is when we look at, I got, I got several videos here. We got a heifer, we got a cow, a couple of cows that walk pretty normal, okay? But you can see as they, as they walk, it's always a slight outward to the, uh, to the light and to the left with the back feet, okay? When you watch the last one, this, this is a different condition, but look at how wide she walks. And, and again, the, there's gonna be different conditions with each one of those walks. So it's getting the floors right is, is hugely important. The next thing I wanna show you here is, so uh, this, is a, this is an eye of yield thing. And, and what I want you to show is this is concrete with a, a, a grade here in the center. But I want you to watch these cows. And they do this almost on a daily basis. These are first and second lactation cows. They run to the milking parlor and they wouldn't run if the floor wouldn't be secure. 
And that's one of the things here. When, when you guys watch what's happening here, this, this was a floor. I'm going to talk a little bit about it. It just amazes me. I never see cows fall here when they run. I see them fall sometimes if they mess around in the pen because they're in heat. But, but not while they're, while they're running to the parlor or back from the parlor. And you can see here, this is, this is a pretty normal, uh, normal thing at this dairy. These cows, you know, three times a day on certain days, they will, they will run. Uh, one of the things here, what we'll, we'll see later on is, is we've done, what we've done with this floor is we, we feel like we did a lot of things right. Okay, and that's why I'm going to get into the constructing the right concrete floors, because one of the things we have to understand is concrete is by far the longest lasting surface. Look at airport runways. Okay, look at look at roads. So one of the things, what is the goal with concrete floors and in the producer, he wants strength. The durability the cow and the hoof trimmer, the cow wants the durability so it doesn't erode. I also want the durability so it's, it's a good service for a long time because I have less wear, it, it, the grooves work better, everything works better. The economy, the producer wants it as, uh, done as cheaply as possible and the contractor wants the workability. So he wants to get this in here quickly so he can make good time. But the problem here is there's a conflict of interest. And so, so that's what, one of the things that happens sometimes in concrete floors is because we don't set the right standard from the beginning, we have floors that don't last. So the next thing what everybody needs to understand, the pressure that a cow exerts against the floor is similar to that of an automobile on the road. Some engineers that did some calculation told me that the, the, a cow is about the same uh, hard, uh, uh, it exerts about the same amount of uh, pressure to the floor as what a SUV, so a small pickup truck. And when you guys think about it, okay, how many uh, cars go in a, on a city street and eventually they deteriorate. And, and I've seen, uh, we've counted on dairies, we had over 2 million cows going into the milking parlor. Some of them where the milking parlor floor was still perfect, like the, almost like the first day. And other ones after a million cows, it started eroding. So what's behind this? There is three things and I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on that because, because some of this uh, will also, can also be found uh, on some of the websites. We want a quality upgrade. We want a suitable concrete mix. And we, can, we want curing, and I'm going to get to that in a little bit. So concrete is a paste, cement, water, uh, you know, and other chemicals, fine aggregates and coarse aggregates. We got the hydration that forms the concrete with, with the heat. So this is uh, uh, out of the University of Wisconsin uh, from construction information. So. The other thing here is the one thing that's really, really important is the water to cement ratio. The weight of the water divided by the weight of the cement and concrete. And we want this ratio to be between 0.45 and 0.4 to achieve 5,000 PSI. As a general rule, as water and cement ratio increases, Covered properties such as strength and durability decreases. And there's a nice slide here. When you guys look at here, on the bottom, you have the water and the cement ratio. So we want to be right in, we want to be right in here. Okay. And what you can see here is as we go down, you see at the at the strength PSI, okay, the, the longer we cure it, the higher the, the PSI goes up. Okay. So, and another thing about curing we've learned here in the last couple of years is that it can't be cured in hot weather. It needs to be covered up and needs to be wetted every day because otherwise it evaporates too quickly and then it doesn't cure correctly. But when we look at this here, okay, when we look at the 28 curing, 
when, when we actually go, go to that right cement to water ratio, we can get over 5, 000, easily over 5,000 PSI. And when those type of floors, when they're cured long enough and they're constructed in, in this matter, they actually hold up. I've seen floors all over the world. Some of them are, are excellent, even after 20 years, some of them are not. And when we go back, a lot of times, this is, this is what mattered here a lot and how it was done. Next thing we're gonna look at a little bit is the surfaces. What we're looking for here is we wanna have as many uh, yellow uh, shaded, yellow brown shaded red uh, points on, on the impact of the hoof because this is like the hoof fall. And the more we have, the, the more of those points are there. What, what that tells us is that there is the, the load is more spread out. The more redness we see here, the more it is spread out. So quite, it's, it's quite interesting to, to understand that. And you can see here, the middle one is probably somewhere in, right in this brushed surface area. So if it's washed out, if we have a lot of stones, I'll show you, we're not gonna have a, a good, a, a good uh, surface area, a, a good, with the surface finish. And, and so it's really important that we have something that's not too, too, uh, slick, but we have something that provides footing. Okay. So with that said, when we look, when we lay a pen on a floor here, you can see here, this is not a hundred percent perfect level. It's got some, uh, some stone showing a little pebble showing and stuff like that. This is probably somewhere in between when it's covered up with manure, like this alley is, it probably doesn't create a lot of problems, but as soon as the it's washed, it probably creates more wear because it's gonna go back to more like, like this area here, okay? Where we have less, less surface area that's touching the hoof, that's touching the ground. Now, if we look at this, with the, this transition alley, okay? We, first of all, it's crowned. You can see here that it's not a level surface, okay? And we learned from this other slide before is we want to have a fairly level surface. So we want to have the hoof touch the ground uh, as much as possible, that hoof wall. So here with, with this much gap in here, there's going to be a lot of instability and, and it's going to raise up that, that, those white line lesions, especially if it gets a little bit slippery. So the same thing here, these grooves are way way too wide or there's way too much uh, trauma with this. And eventually this is gonna, it can uh, uh, result in more wear, but definitely it's gonna wear out, wear in uh, uh, with more maybe axial wall fissures and white line lesions. So when we look at it is we wanna have grooving to, for secure mobility. As an example here, it's fairly flat but, but the point here is these grooves are way too far apart, plus they're rounded. They're like kind of like V grooves, not wide enough. Here we've got a groove that's a little bit, uh, a flat that's a little bit too wide because it should be no wider than an average, average shoe. About, about uh, two, and, two and three, two and three quarter inches, uh, about, about um, five and a half, six centimeters, okay? So, and then the other thing here is the grooves aren't wide enough, okay? So here they're too far apart, a little bit too far apart and not wide enough. So what we've learned over the years now is we just various things that have been done in the last 20 years, that if we have a sharp edge on a groove, it doesn't matter if this floor is a little bit strippy, the deep, with this deep groove, which is 19 uh, millimeters wide, about 12, 10 to 12 um, millimeters deep. And the flat part here, we'll see it, it's about 65 millimeter or it's three and a quarter inches from center to center. So this was, has been published on the Dairy Land Initiative for, for, for multiple years, probably 10 years or, or something like that. And what we're finding is with this, just like we saw before, the hoof on this, is always gonna be 
uh, either one claw is on the groove or sometimes both claws are on a groove. So there is very little slipping going on. The other key component is, is that this edge is sharp. We learned this more and more. Now, with, with, and that's where you see the cows running before, that's exactly how those floors were done. So, so when we look at this, we have a flat surface. We know with a flat surface, the hoof has the best uh, impact on that, on, the, on, that, on that floor, okay? We have good stability when the floors are flat. With the 90 degree edge, it always stops that foot, especially if it's 19, so 18 to, to 20 millimeters wide or three quarters of an inch to seven eighths of an inch, somewhere in, in that range. Generally, the blades come, come in quarter of an inch or, 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 or six millimeters. So three blades, you get about a, a, an 18, 19 millimeter cut. You can see here both claws can be resting on the groove or even if the one is on this, it's still not very far that it's gonna slide when it sl slips out, okay? And that's part of the thing that brings the, the security to the, to the hoof. That's, that's why they're not slipping out, especially with the sharp edges. So how did we, how did we come up with that? Uh, probably 20, uh, eight, uh, no, uh, 20 years ago, 19, 18, 19 years ago, Nigel Cook and I, one time, we were on a couple of farms doing some consulting work, and we noticed on the one farm uh, how secure those cows were walking, and, and we started measuring the groove, and it was kind of like exactly what we're seeing here, and, and we studied that for a little while, and we said, okay, let's, let's, try, let's try this for a while, and we could see that other facilities didn't have that type of lock. So we saw more white line lesions. So, so, so we came up with this. And, and here uh, in the last year, uh, it was actually the evaluation was done for the uh, stride length uh, by two students, tech students in Switzerland. This heifer facility had a broom finish. And what's happening is they deep grooved all of this. And so they, they filmed the heifers, they counted the steps, they, they measured the, 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 the steps, the, the strides, and they came back after they grooved it. And, and you can see here, this is, these are pregnant, pregnant heifers, uh, kind of in that. And, and one of the interesting thing came out of it that the stride length was almost 20 centimeters longer after the deep group than it was before. And before it was kind of a broom finish, but it just was uh, a days uh, and they didn't just uh, film, uh, they didn't just do the evaluation right after it was grooved. It was like a couple of weeks later uh, and, and they did it way before. And you can see here when they did it the first time, the floors were fairly dry. So it, it's, you know, it shouldn't have made that big of a difference, but it did. And you can see here, you know, we went from a low of 75 to 130. And here we went from a, a one meter three to one meter 40. So, so, but the average was about 20, 20 centimeters more stride length. And they could really see also, uh, I don't have that on here. There was less slipping, less, less slipping out a lot less with, with, the, with the deep groove. So usually for years, the grooving was done this way, okay? And, and you can see here that we had a float where with the runners on it, where the dimensions was exactly like we, we saw before, okay? It's a difficult job. Uh, the slum factor of the concrete matters. So how, how wet it is, how, uh, uh, how it's placed, the timing, the weather, if it's in a hot day, the precision of the float operator, and it's hard work for the guy that has to do the float, okay? This, was, this video was taken on a small dairy, and, and one of the things here is on this small dairy with sand bedding, this was gonna be pretty sufficient. But what I wanna show you now is what it looks like. When you look at close, have a close look at it, you get some 90 degree sharp edges, but, but they're not super, super sharp. They're a little bit rounded, okay? 
The other thing is with this type of surface, sometimes you get a lot of extra wear at the beginning, especially because the, the top is a little bit rough. And on a big dairy, that can be a big thing because even though we can maybe grind it down with a cement block, it still creates a little extra wear. And when you look at the slide on the side here, okay, this was probably done too wet. And, and you can see here, because it, it turned out there is a lot, a lot of roughness here. Pattern is all right. So, so just to understand, this is the best guy. If, if we have the best guy on, a, on, a, on the float, it's okay. I'm working with a large dairy and uh, that expanded from uh, 2,000 to over 7,000 cows. And the first expansion of uh, from 2,000 to uh, four and a half thousand cows. The owner himself did all the grooving and it turned out pretty good. He was pretty happy. After that, he decided he didn't have, he didn't have time anymore and he didn't, couldn't find anybody qualified to run that float. And so what, what he did then is, is he actually started cutting the grooves in. And, and because uh, they expanded with cutting the grooves in because when you cut them in uh, a week to 10 days, after the concrete is cured, you're gonna get that perfect, you're gonna get that perfect groove. And, and you can see here, it's a slow process because what we have to think about is we're cutting three times, uh, four times with this machine, we're cutting four times, 18 millimeters, 19 millimeters. Now uh, that's, that's, uh, that's uh, 72 to 75 millimeters of concrete that we move. This is actually the breezeway where we saw the cows running before. You can see here when, when that was done. And, and uh, it was done in, in, the, in the fall, uh, November, uh, and it wasn't, so it was all the grooving, all the concrete was poured before it got too cold. And, and the grooves were cut as well before it got too cold. Here, uh, what I wanna show you is, uh, the same, uh, a similar video again, but, but what I want to show you here is what actually happened. This was the first two years at this facility. We had two toe ulcers on the left front, and we had two, two, uh, two or three, and all four on the left rear. Right front, very little, right rear about the same as the back, but you, you can see here the white lines, the same thing. The left front were more and the left rear. And it's because when cows stop, they, uh, they turn to the right. So, so when they come to the end of the barn or something like that, it's the left front that stops. And till to this day, we still see more white lines on the left front. But I mean, this is minimal. We're looking at over 500 cows here. And, and uh, this was the first... 16 months, but very few thin soles, because if we had had thin soles, a lot of thin soles, we would have had a lot more toe ulcers. The other interesting thing is that the toe ulcers and the white lines were uh, the first lactation and third lactation was the biggest problem. The first lactations were way in the back uh, and, and the third lactation were, third lactation were, were in the closest pens. So it could have been from the transition from the old barn. They moved from an old mattress barn in the new sand barn. That could have had something to do with it. But two-year-olds were mostly, definitely most affected. What we've learned now is the two-year-olds are not going back here anymore because they keep running uh, on us too much. But what to do with the floors that are not designed right? And, and I'll show you some pictures here. You see these pictures on the right. And people, what we, what, what we always think is the more pattern there is, the better it is for the cows. But even for us, if we walk across this particular floor or this particular floor, it's not comfortable to walk for me. How can, it's not a flat surface, it's crowned, okay? And so what can we do with those type of floors? We know now that from the beginning we can, if we make it flat and, and so if we don't have a grooving machine, even just uh, have a good guy on the float or then eventually cut the groove saying that's probably the ultimate. There is uh, uh, at least uh, five or six large dairies that I know today over 
a thousand cows that actually cut all their floors with the, with the, with the cut the groove same after uh, pouring a flat concrete that had a moderate finish on it, not a rough broom finish. Okay, so first we got to make a flat surface. And then we got to, uh, what we got to do is we, we got to make the most effective traction. A lot of times people think if we have diamond grooving, we have better traction. But if the grooves are only uh, a half inch wide or, or 1.2 centimeters wide, it doesn't stop the foot, okay? Today, today we know so much more. Uh, and, and at the end, I'm gonna talk about a couple, three people that actually helped thinking about this. The whole thing is a step-by-step -step process. Never, we can never make it, we should never make it too rough. Even this here, and this is a lot of, we see this all over the world, these big stamp patterns. This is rolled, this is stamped. So when we stamp, the, 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 the concrete's gotta go somewhere. So we always get a crown surface. So there's never any stability. And you can see here, we don't have a lot of, uh, a, a lot of uh, sharp edges at all. So one of the big problems here is we see white line lesions. A lot of times on these facilities, it's not so bad because a lot of times these are dry lot dairies. So the cows don't spend all day walking on these floors. They come in and eat, they go back out and, and, and live in the dry lots. And, and so the next thing here is you see this type of flooring or one that really eroded really quickly because it is probably poor during hot weather and not covered up. And, and this was only like three years after it was built, the whole breezeway, the whole uh, travel lane was like that. And, and they covered it with rubber, some of it, but the rubber was going uh, eaten away after uh, three or four years from the bottom up because, because it was too rough on a, of a surface underneath it. Here, a lot of times uh, there's some machines out there that actually do grooving, but they don't cut sharp edges. They just kind of hammer it out of there. And you can see this, the same thing, all those things, we need to first create a flat surface. And, and then we got, again, these patterns, these patterns are very aggressive. And, and what I've seen all over the world with these type of patterns is, especially on bigger dairies, a lot of wear. <laughs> there's never any hoof trimming to do. More like, most generally, we, we actually have to do things, either uh, put rubber down to reduce the wear, and we'll get to that later. Uh, uh, or, or again, it looks, it looks like it should work, but it's not after polishing it for a while, it gets slippery as well. And when the manure dries on, it's slippery. And then we get the erosions like from just cow traffic. Two million cows across this floor into the milking parlor. Same thing here milking parlor deck. So it's going to erode. And, and we've learned if it's done right from the beginning, it, it can last. Or some of those areas now are covered with rubber. So planing, when we do the planing, we kind of take that crown off, off the cobblestone, or we make a flatter surface. So in this case, uh, with the planing drum, so this is actually cutting. It's diamond, blade, diamond that cuts the, the concrete out. So it doesn't even though it leaves a texture, it's not a texture where the feet are gonna wear, it's instant traction. This is like an in-between thing. So we're, we're taking the crown off to create a flatter surface. So the cow is more comfortable walking on that surface. So we get more of those yellow and red dots when that cow walks and she doesn't slip off of that crown, uh, off of the crown of the, from, from the concrete. So with two either grooves, we just kind of mill this down a little bit, we, we get some traction out of it, maybe for uh, six months, maybe for a year and a half, depending what we clean it with, okay? So with the planing, we re remove rough or uneven parts of the floor. The goal of planing is to create a better transit surface. More, it should be more flat and more stable. The slightly roughened surface will not create extra wear. We, and we've, we've noted that. Years ago, we do some of that with, the, with like hammer scabbling or texturing. And, and there we always see wear right from the beginning. And once that kind of wear goes away, then the floors are slippery again. So you can see here, 
here there was just so many things were done on this floor and the only way we can improve it is by milling two, three millimeters off of that. And maybe in, in a couple of years, this will happen again. And eventually we're down where we have a, 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 still have a groove left, but we actually have a plane, a flatter surface for the cows to walk on. And just doing this in this particular farm reduced the white line lesions. And, and here it created better traction uh, on the left-hand side, removing the crown. This was another floor. You can see here a lot of things were done to this floor, right? Probably hammers with, uh, who knows what happened. And this farm had an incredible wear problem and the cows were like walking like on eggshells, uh, you know? And so we, they, we went in, somebody went in here and they planed it down to make a flatter surface and, and they improved it. You can see how bad it was because even with taking three millimeters or four, three millimeters off, it still didn't get completely flat. So there's a lot of floors out there that I see around the world, okay? So, and then the other thing I wanna, wanna talk about is the mini groove. So, and the mini groove is like uh, either a quarter of an inch, quarter of an inch, or, or six millimeters, six millimeters, six millimeters, six millimeters. So we cut a six millimeter groove and we leave six millimeters. And that's like a, a 24 to 26 plate set up on, 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 30, uh, on 30 centimeters. And, and we do this where, where we have uh, flatter floors, but we don't have the correct grooving. So, so what we do is we have a flat, uh, the, the traction is not sufficient. We can do this after planing to, to create better traction. We can do that in between grooves Sometimes we get floors where the grooves are, are okay, but it gets really polished from the sand and from the tires three times a day. Or we do this to improve traction on slippery, slippery surfaces. The 20 blade setup is for straight areas, flat areas where we drive on it with heavy equipment because there we leave uh, seven millimeters instead of four, six millimeters where with the 26 blade we leave a little bit less. And you can see here, this was a this was an alley. The grooves were too wide apart. They, they were decent grooves. They were, they were uh, 19 millimeter grooves, but <coughs> the cows would just slip on this notoriously. So we actually, the, the guy actually went in with a 26 plate setup and, and we go about two millimeters steep. So one eighth of an inch just to put some, some traction in there because with the 26 blade, uh, blade pattern, we can come back in three, four years at the same thing uh, and, and do it again. And, and like here in the US, this is uh, the cost of this is about uh, uh, 70 cents a, a, a square foot. Uh, th that would be per square meter, it'd be about uh, nine times seven so it'd be about 60, 65 cents a square meter. And, and so uh, this was an old barn. Uh, and you can see here, we had grooves in there. There was something else done one time to it. The traction just wasn't good anymore. And we went in with this 26 blade pattern, cows show heat. Uh, it's just amazing what it's done is and the, the white lesions basically are gone today in a, in a setup like that. And then you see here two other samples, slatter floors, which are quite common in Europe, uh, some in Canada. Uh, another way that's again would be a six millimeter, six millimeter. The same thing here, this was a colleague of mine in Japan in a flush barn. Again, first they had to plane it because it was kind of stamped in there. So, the, and you can see down this floor now, I was at this dairy uh, a year and a half, two years ago, quite impressed with the traction and quite impressed with what we saw from a lameness prevention end of it. So, and this, what it looks like is when we put mini grooves into a, in between the deep grooves, they're too far apart. That's another thing we can do and, and to try to set the shoe up. So it's, it's not taking the edge away. And uh, this is probably a better example. This was a holding pen that were, it had the deep roof in it. 
but the top of the floor has been polished too many times. So they put this in and actually it was quite effective afterwards. The same thing here in this barn, putting these three grooves in the middle of that, the floor still stays flat. We still have the use of the, the three quarter or the 19 millimeter groove. We just provided a little extra traction on this. So when it comes to rubber, you can see here, uh, we've learned over the years. This is one of my, was one of my dairies. In 1997, we decided to put rubber along the feed box. Yeah, okay, somebody would say, well, this, this is probably slippery because it doesn't have the, the pattern in it. But the, the, the issue was not really the slipperiness, it was that we found that cows would stand longer in the two pens where we had rubber compared to the two, two pens where we didn't have rubber. This is at a large dairy, and I completely agree with this, with the travel lane. Uh, along the feed bunk, um, cows, cows seem to have an excuse. If the stalls or the weather, the temperature is hot, they decide to stand longer. And standing, you saw earlier, standing results in soil ulcers. That's why soil ulcers always go up the end of the summer. So we need to get everything encouraging for those cows to eat and go and lay down. And, and there is no data that shows that they're eating more if we have rubber along the feed bunk. Actually at this particular dairy, we found no difference in production, actually less lameness where we didn't have rubber and even maybe a little bit higher production on those cows. The other thing I see is here is sometimes with rubber, I see always an increase of digital dermatitis. And I'm wondering if it's because the bacteria can breed underneath these, these recessed one, even this was recessed, but you, we just have a higher bacterial load. Even on the top surface, it gets cleaned, but what about some of the other ones? So those, those are the things. So what I want rubber is to reduce wear, like for long walking distances. See here, this, this was a large dairy, and you can see cows are walking on the rubber. Rubber here, rubber here, rubber here. You can see three lanes going. I don't have a problem with that. And the other thing is every rotary exit for me should have rubber, okay? Just because when you watch here, these cows make a, make a, a 180 degree turn or a 90 degree turn. And they always turn the same way. They always turn to the right. So if you don't have rubber there and we have a rough surface, what's happening is we get a lot more wear on that right rear foot and eventually we, we, get, we, we can get thin soles. So that's, that's a place where, where I want to see rubber. So long walking distances, uh, sometimes in, in, in the entrance in the parlor, holding pens. Again, uh, if the floors are secured, it's not always necessary. People have put it in and really didn't see any difference. And, and, and so what the conclusion with that is, we, we need to, if we have it with concrete, we need to utilize the, the correct finish. So we need a deep groove, may it be done by hand or with cutting. With existing floor, we can do planing, we can do mini grooves. Uh, the other thing is the concrete mix, mix really matters. And, and uh, I still go around, I see too many floors that were rushed and, and you know, they, they last three, four years and, and they start eroding. Uh, we, we need to use rubber to control wear, 90 degree turns, steeper slopes like downhill slopes. When, I, when I've got more than 2% uh, slope, I wanna see uh, a rubber in there so cows don't slide down, down that uh, exit lane. We need to use rubber only when it's effective, okay? To control the wear. The other thing with the floors, we have one chance to get the chop done right because it's long lasting, but we have one chance. So with that, we're gonna go into the successful handling system. So that this would be hoof trimming areas, could also be handling system for other cow work, for, for hoof health, uh, for, for uh, herd health work, like treatment cows and stuff like that. So, so the thing here is the first consideration is the cow and then the treatments and the protocols. So, and we need to have standard operating procedures. So with the facility, we wanna have 
uh, the facility assigned, we're gonna have a holding pen. We wanna have a direction box, which is called the Bud Box from uh, the late Bud Williams. And you can see a drawing later, a Bud Box generally is 3.6 to 4.2 meters wide and six meters long. And the other thing I've learned over the years is that cows prefer right turns. So if I can turn them to the right into a race, they always go better than to the left. And that's just common knowledge. And then the hoof trimming shoot. So, so as an example here, this is a small, this is a, uh, a breezeway. We've got a, a shoot off here. So these cows come down, we close the gate down here. We, uh, we bring cows in, we, three to five cows into this butt box or, or three cows or two cows. We shut this panel, cows go down here, and as they come to the end, they automatically turn around because cows wanna come back where they came from. I, as the operator, shut the panel, I stand right here and walk back and forth here without any motion, you can see that later. The cows turn because the gate is closed, they automatically go in the race and it's a right turn in the race. And you can see the race should be about 75 to 80 centimeters wide, not too, not too long. So this is a very similar, uh, very simple outfit. Here we've got another one. And here we actually have a little, we have a right turn. So uh, again, an alley with the butt box, the gate closes, cows come in here. And what I'm always noticing is that cows look better into the chute if it's not straight in front of them. So if I have a like, uh, anywhere from a meter to a meter 50 behind the shoot, a little, a little bit of a right turn, they just more load so much more consistent, okay? So this can be uh, put into small facilities. This is a, a large facility here. You can see the rotary drawing, uh, rotary up here, return lanes, palpation rails, holding pen. And here, there, this is an area here where, uh, you know, people were just gonna make a funnel and load the cows like that. Poor guys, they're gonna work really hard to try to get those cows in there because it's not what the cow wants to do. So what we did here is we put this together for, for that dairy. We, so the shoot, the shoot, instead of being here, the shoot will be up here at an angle, slightly turning this way. And when we look at it here is we've got our Three, uh, 360 to four meter 20 wide butt box that's six meters long. We bring the cows in from the holding pen. They come up against this gate that it generally is a solid gate where they can't see. They automatically turn and they load this lane. And that's, that's a really efficient way. Uh, so, so as an example here in the field application here, we actually got a hoof path here at this dairy. We've got the holding pen back here. And you can see here right now, I'm getting ready to load, to load the race. And this was way early, uh, just as the facility was pr pretty new. And, and we had a little bit of a slipping problem in the corner there because not sufficient grooving you can see here. But as the cows come in here, you can see it was a cold day. I think it was like when we filmed this, it was like minus 15. There the couches fell, but I'm shutting that gate. Okay. And all I do now is I just carefully walk up the side. You can see cows are turning, turning to the right. Okay. One cow follows in. And it's nice to have about a meter between the pen and the race because it's easy to move those cows forward. You can see here, those four, those, those five cows are, lay, uh, are uh, loaded in there. Our lane was a little bit too wide at the beginning. We were like almost a meter. And you can see here, this is how easy it is to get cows in. The other thing we found was is that sight away from the person should always be paneled. So at the beginning, we didn't have a panel here. Cows would look out through here to watch what cows are doing down here. So once we put this panel here, no more problems. The cows had actually load. So this whole outside is panel. The inside is open because I want the cow to see me when I, when I go and get the next cow. So 
you can see here, this is another setup at a large dairy. And, and this is the butt box. Here we have a left turn. And here sometimes we struggle a little bit getting those cows in. But you can see here, this, this is a large dairy. We've got probably 10 cows lined up in this race. And it would have worked better, but the way the design was, we couldn't easily make a, a right turn because of the cow trap. You can see here, the cows come forward, the trimming shoot up there, very simple way and off they go again. So, so in, in the, the same principles, and then we have backup gates, as you will see uh, 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 in, in the next video. This is the la uh, another one quickly here. Somebody did it in the breeze way. This gate closes off, bring cows down, shut the gate behind it, and they load very easily in, into that lane. They, they, they really love the way it, it works. And the other thing here is, what I want to show you now is, this was me trimming here a couple of weeks ago. See, not everybody is in the race, but I don't even go back because as I take the first cow off, the next ones will follow in and they always come closer and closer. So this was when there was five or six cows left. This when I had the second to last cow in the chute. And you can see there is the last one is waiting and you can see the backup gate right behind her there. So no, no, there's a backup gate right where she's stopping. So she goes past that backup gate and she can't go back anymore. So for me as, as the operator, all I have to walk back is about three, four meters and bring the next cow in. And we could even have them closer, but it's always, it seems like sometimes they come closer. They wait right here. They wait right here at, at, at this corner. Uh, they wait right there at the corner where, where, we, where, we, uh, where we saw it before. So the results, what, what, I'm, what we see in these type of system, cow behavior, it's just a calm demeanor, self-loading tendencies, worker efficiency, the decreased steps. If somebody puts some cows in that butt box, those cows will follow the next one on, out because they don't want to be left behind. They see all the rest of them lined up in the race. They want, they want, to, they want to go. Increase productivity and they're just calmer. Effective design and then it's a safe environment. So with that, I want to say thank you uh, to everybody that was here. We're going to answer some questions if there are any. The other thing here is a lot of this has been done by help from Dr. Nigel Cook, Alan LeBlanc from Track Ride Services. He was the one uh, 15 years ago that was not happy with the floors and he did something about it. He, he, he worked tirelessly trying to find good systems and he's actually the one that developed the Track Ride machine that we uh, eventually fine tuned. And then uh, Travis Bushman's one of my associates that really has put a lot of time into uh, learning more about concrete, how it should be done, talking to engineers and all of that. So thank you to all of those.